Hello everyone, welcome to my 1cc commentary clear for Razion EX for the Nintendo Switch. This is a fairly new shmup release and previously was only available physically, but thanks to the arm twisting of Shmup Junkie and a little bit for myself, I don't know if the developer ended up seeing my video, turns out that the developer had a change of heart and was able to bring it to the Nintendo eShop, which I greatly appreciate it. Because before then, I wasn't really planning to get the game because I don't really like the whole physical collector rat race scalping issue that we often see with really limited releases like this. And so I thought, well, as cool as the game may or may not be, why would I review it on my channel if none of my viewers can actually pick it up and play it? You know, it'd feel a little bit exclusive and I'm not a big fan of that. But luckily, now that it is available on the eShop, I was able to pick it up and discuss it here and I actually had a lot of fun playing it and I was really curious actually to see how well it performed, how well it played, how help, much it held up because I had heard about a lot of the projects this developer has done over the years but haven't really picked too many of them up. I was uh, aware of Gunlord for the, um, what's like a Dreamcast it was? I think it came out on a bunch of different stuff but I remember it getting a lot of press on the Dreamcast. So I thought, well it's really cool how much this developer has persisted over the years. One of my I guess softer criticisms of a lot of indie shmup studios or indie studios in general not just shmup is that they tend to be sort of one and done affairs where they make that one game and then just sort of disappear or take 12 years to make another game or whatever and so shout out to the developer for keeping things coming and you know making a really cool shmup and so before I get into the nitty-gritty of the game design level design and just thoughts on general strategy and everything like that why don't I give a little bit of an overview of my thoughts on the game, a quick bite-sized review maybe. So I will say that while playing the game, I was surprised at how well done a lot of the level design is and how few Euro Shmup elements the game truly has because, you know, one thing that is always a bit of a challenge for European developers, especially of the past, is sort of reining in those instincts towards Euro Shmupping, which tend to be things like making the ships underpowered, or being too, emphasizing too much the weapon systems, you know, inertia, of course, movement inertia, that's a nightmare. Um, too, too few enemies, not enough enemies, they have too much health. Those are all kind of the classic hallmarks of a Euro shmup. And really, I was pleasantly surprised how much this game was able to avoid a lot of those issues and uh, deliver what I would consider a fairly authentic. I don't like to use the word authentic, but it's hard to exactly know what the correct term is, but a fairly exciting, I don't know, fairly authentic, I guess is the only word I can think of, shmupping experience, which is really fantastic. Though there were two things about the game in about one minute of playing that I picked up on that I thought, okay, these are some pretty obvious oversights that hopefully the developer will patch out here because they're just sort of no-nos when it comes to shmupping. The first one I think is a little bit more obvious. You can even see it from the footage here which is that he messed up or the developers messed up with the layering of the sprite priority where they put the player sprites at a higher priority over the enemy sprites and you no 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 you don't want to do that you definitely want the enemy bullets and enemy sprites to be the top layer of your shmup because they are the main focus whereas the player shot is mostly especially in a sort of bullet hell style shmup is more of a suggestion of what you want to be looking at rather than the main thing you want to be focusing on and so the biggest difficulty especially when you jump up to maniac mode actually of the game i would say even more than the bullet patterns and everything like that is straight up bullet visibility where on top of the player shot getting on top of the enemy sprites you also see that a lot of the background element elements tend to blend in with the bullets and the bullets don't have any sort of glow or really strong visual indicators to separate them from the background and so there is a good amount of memorization that is required for the game not just because of the bullet design and enemy patterns and everything like that but also just for pure visibility you kind of have to just anticipate where the bullets are going to be at times especially in the higher difficulty which is a little bit unfortunate and hopefully he will update that with a patch so that's the first and obvious uh glaring issue with the game that i think should be patched out when the developer has the time the second issue that's a little bit less obvious that I'm not sure if too many people picked up on is the fact that he got the auto shot and the focus shot priority backwards. So it's actually reversed of what it's supposed to be. So the way it should work 
is that when you hold the rapid shot, that is sort of your default shot. And then, so you're holding both buttons at the same time, right? Just imagine that you're holding both buttons. When you're holding both buttons, it should actually default to concentrated shot, not rapid shot. But the way it works now in the game is that if you hold both buttons, it will default to the rapid shot, which is completely backward from every other shmup ever. And so your muscle memory is very confused. Luckily, if you have a Brooks board like myself, you actually can fix this issue with hardware where instead of binding your second shot to the auto shot in game, instead what you'll do is you'll bind your shot to two different buttons and shout out to developers for allowing you to do that in the button config. And then you using your uh, turbo function within your arcade stick, set turbo to that second fire button. That way it is now corrected to where if you hold down the concentrated shot, it will prioritize that over the rapid shot, which is the way it should be. So. I think those are two things that would be pretty easily fixed in a patch and I think they really should be because otherwise they, it kind of gives the game a little bit of a funkier feel than I think it deserves because the game has a lot of elements that again I think are very authentic uh, to use a lack for lack of a better term towards a quality shmup experience. So what's interesting about the game, we start talking about the game a little bit here, is this stage two is really reminiscent of me from Axelay. If you play Axelay stage three, the cave, I think that must have been an influence on this stage because not only visually do they look similar to one another, but also actually the way the enemies are laid out, the way they have these sort of hives you have to take out and everything like that. That's all very Axelay stage three. So I'm pretty sure that's where the inspiration for that stage came from. And so now we're on Razion stage three. And this one I think is one of the more challenging stages because you do need to route it out. Otherwise you're gonna get walled off in the later sections of the game. It's all about playing aggressively. And I will say that the game does do a pretty good job of balancing the shot and concentrated shot uh, damage output to where it feels natural. But for the most part, I would say in this stage and a lot of the other bullet hell style stages, you do want to use a lot of rapid shot and move around the screen. And what's really interesting is if you're playing in maniac mode, you get a different ship color. So if you play normal mode, your ship color is green. And if you play in maniac mode, your ship color is red. And I'm pretty sure this isn't just um, visual. I think there's also a gameplay change between the two ships where it felt like the red ship in maniac mode was actually faster and had faster movement speed and everything like that which is a really useful buff. And another really interesting thing about the difference between the difficulties is that, again, the boss fights between the difficulties aren't really all that different from one another. Yes, the stages are more hectic, but to counterbalance that, you also have a more powerful ship, it seems like. So um, the jump from maniac mode to hard mode isn't as much, or from normal mode to maniac mode, isn't as steep as you would initially suspect. So this mid boss here is one of the more challenging mid bosses of the game, especially because it has these bouncing bullets you'll see. This is a new theme I am sensing among Western indie shmups. The bouncing bullets are in because if you play another Western indie shmup that came out recently, uh, Space Hunter DX, that also has the same sort of bouncing bullet uh, challenges in the later stages. So. I don't know if this is common among Japanese shmups. I can't really recall playing too many where the bouncing bullets are a thing, but today they are definitely in. You'll see bouncing bullets in this game on a, a number of boss fights, and you also see it in Star Hunter DX with some pretty ridiculous bouncing bullet patterns in that game in the final stage. So the key to this stage is all about knowing the routing with your uh, hyper attack, whatever you want to call it, your hyper shot, your bomb. And so let me explain this system a little bit here. So the way it works is that the game has a recharging meter and when the meter is full, you can launch your hyper and the hyper will cancel bullets. It'll go through uh, enemy objects. It'll go through terrain, which is all extremely useful, I will say. And the game is explicitly designed around this feature, especially in the later stages. But on top of that, what will also happen is that your player shot will also get nerfed. You'll see that where it would go from that spread shot to just a single shot. And so it's a really fun balancing mechanism where you are tempted to just spam the crap out of the hyper shot. And without that balance, you probably would. 
but since that it since it does nerf your normal shot a little bit here uh, you can get yourself in some sticky situations if you get too hyper happy that being said though a lot of what the game comes down to as far as survival gameplay and i'm sure scoring gameplay as well is having really solid hyper routing for example on this boss fight here what i'm doing is i'm saving up my hyper for this pink pattern from the tail so here it comes because it walls you off pretty good uh move backwards get that little cancel and then just move into position and there you go once you know the hyper routing on the boss fight it's actually a pretty simple straight ahead boss fight not too challenging at all now i will say that probably in terms of the game's design the boss fights are a bit of a weak spot because not only do some of them sort of blend together like the last three stages the boss fights sort of blend together fairly well but also they really aren't too challenging besides the final boss which is mostly challenging because of this really ridiculous pattern which we'll see here but outside of that the boss fights in this game aren't too challenging and i think they could have used a little bit more oomph and a little bit more variety in patterns because some patterns do get recycled and they are a little bit too easy to manipulate in my opinion this stage though is probably the best stage in the game design wise i would say it is the most bullet helly stage but in the best way where it has a uh, really interesting routing where you have these larger enemies here that you need to take out but then you have these smaller enemies that are constantly flanking you and pushing you in and really i really like the way the game encourages you to get around these issues by moving forward that's sort of the uh, hidden trick to getting around a lot of these patterns is you take oh death there you take out the enemy and then you move up and around them um one thing about this game that i think was a smart choice is that a lot of the enemies will not fire backwards at you once they pat once you pass them so just getting around them is a pretty legitimate survival strategy i will say and here we go to this first mid boss i think moving up to the top of the screen is better than staying in the back and then it's all about getting the cancels correct here and what you want to watch out for is again these bouncing bullets and if you're not used to that that's going to get you the first times you play the game and then here up and around manipulate those red bullets they are tracking this bit here is actually pretty easy you just uh get position clear and then maneuver yourself around them rinse and repeat not too bad at all they're very easy to manipulate just uh, by going into rapid shot and moving at full speed. And you need to attack this tail to take it out, I'm pretty sure. The tip of the tail there like that. Here we go with these bullet cancels. So in Maniac mode, you notice those bullets didn't cancel. But in normal mode, those uh, bullets do cancel. So here, this back half of the stage is one of the more challenging bits because you're not getting the cancels. And there's going to be certain enemies that spawn. This reminds me a little bit of Pink Sweets, actually that if you attack them they release these suicide bullets and so here they are and so there are times where you don't want to attack them you actually just want to ru run up and around them that dodge was pretty clutch i will say but i didn't really employ that strategy this run i was a little bit more trigger happy than i remember but the thing about it is if you get the kills and you move forward and get those blocks you'll recharge your hyper or whatever you want to call it your bomb your hyper faster so this boss here is a total prelude to the final boss so the final boss basically has all these patterns but they're a little bit beefed up and so this boss is actually pretty dang easy fight all you need to do is stick to the back corner here kind of near the topper upper i always say topper that's not correct upper end and you'll be fine with those patterns this pattern here you just need to micro through it save your hyper for when those pink bullets spawn and then sneak your way around the lanes there not too bad at all and there you go so i've taken two deaths so far which is a little bit unfortunate but hanging in there pretty good so here we go stage five i believe uh, second to last stage and this stage is all about knowing the routing uh this one is a little bit more how would you call it gimmicky than the other stages where it's just all about knowing the routing and the enemies are pretty sort of rigidly placed Ooh, unfortunate deaths there but you also can just sneak around a lot of them too which i think is interesting a uh, little bit of i think uh oversight with the level design but at the same time it gives the game a real certain feel because 
once you get sort of trapped into a corner, you can have a hell of a time trying to get out. Especially if you're not getting the bullet cancels like I didn't there. So it's all about making sure with those top enemies that fly above and drop the pink, uh, pink rain on top of you. Making sure to take those guys out early. Uh, move along with those. And then sort of on these enemies, what I like to do is you sort of stay below them. But be prepared to cross over. And that's kind of how you're able to take out them out pretty efficiently. Watch, so you kind of stay below or in the middle of them and then be able to cross over in between the patterns. This bit here is pretty tricky. You need to uh, stick to the bottom, but you also need to watch out for the uh, the meteor there and then also the spinner spawning stuff from above. What's again is interesting is there's an enemy very much like that in Star Hunter DX. So I do wonder if there was some crossover between the developers or if one of them inspired the other or if it's like an asset or something but both of them have very similar enemies like that the sort of starfish spinning enemies the, tr the trick here is you just move down with the pattern and there's this lane in the center that you go down once you know that the fight isn't all that hard it's just a question of if you're able to make that maneuver with your arcade stick or not here what you want to do is you've got to take these stars out early otherwise you're in for a hell of a time and then not get tricked into moving up prematurely by those enemies up top. This is one thing about the game that's a little bit interesting is that sometimes it really does feel like it's more beneficial just to avoid certain enemies than to kill them. And I do think that's always a little bit of an oversight when it comes to a shmup where well, personally I always think it's good to make enemies that sort of punish you to some degree for moving around them just as simply as you do in this game. But at the same time, um, finding that balance is also really difficult, so I do understand that. Because if you make them so they just blast at you from behind all the time, that turns into a nightmare as well. So here, this boss is somewhat similar to the last boss, actually. It's just all about tap dodging in the back corner. Uh, this pattern here is actually really fun to dodge these ropes. Reminds me a little bit of DDP uh, Big B. And then here, uh, the good old up and down pattern. You'll see this a ton in Toho. This reminds me of like a Toho style pattern. Um, the way you do it here is you just keep firing, try and focus on the damage. And when it gets close, move back hyper and just try and get that damage off and get the cancel. There you go. And then here, this pattern, you want to play a little bit more aggressively. And you want to hold on to your hyper as long as you can because you're going to need it to get around the meteors more than the bullets. You'll see me. I'll do it again here. Yeah, because you get a nice good amount of invulnerability with the hyper. And so sometimes you have to fire it off just to get around the meteors. Okay, final stage. This boss is interesting. The thing about it that's kind of silly is that after you take out this center pattern here, you can. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. I'm recording late. You can just sit at the bottom of the screen and just let them fly away. You don't have to take the risk if you don't feel like it. If you're playing for score, I'm sure you do, but survival-wise, jump. So here we go. Final stage. This stage is all about the free movement and just holding rapid shot and maneuvering around things and moving forward after your hypers. That's sort of a bit of a trick. This mid-boss is one of the harder ones uh, because these bounces are just ridiculous. And it's also got some RNG as far as where it throws those bullets, so... Okay, good. There, I shot prematurely. There we go. This dodge is pretty sick. And the thing about it is, at this point, because of the way the final boss works, I can't really die, or dying is going to make things real challenging. Uh, having two extends makes it comfortably doable. Having one extend is doable, but it's not a fun time. So doing well so far. Uh, this mid boss here is tricky. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and hyper. And I ended up dying there because I hypered and I missed. <laughs> I hyper too low. I should have hypered higher up and killed those because I was and I should have waited a little longer. But because I did that, it's kind of just sort of a game over. So now I can't die. And here's the final mid boss before the last boss. And this guy's tricky. This one's a tough one because of uh, this pattern there that's scary 
And then this pattern here is also scary because you got to get up and around it, but then you got to make this dodge happen. There we go, made the dodge happen. And perfect. So then there's just a few little extra enemies. I'm not sure why, but they're there. Here we go, final boss. This I have to play absolutely perfectly to get the clear because of the final pattern. So here we go, just like in stage three, I think it was. You just tap, 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 or stage four. The patterns are very similar between those two. Just nice, easy tap dodges. Don't let yourself get cornered. And then here you kind of stay in the top third of the screen and there you can see a lane appear and you just sort of hang it out up there. This dodge is pretty critical because I can't fire it off too early otherwise I'm going to get pinched but if you're too late then you're not going to recharge in time so I think that was pretty perfect timing. The goal here is to try and get through this pattern without hypering but unfortunately I get pinned in there so I have to. That hyper is going to really cost me because now I don't have a hyper for that dodge. That dodge is very difficult. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to hit it. So now it's do or die. This is actually a super challenging situation because I got to take out the last few rounds here without hypering. That was an incredibly clutch hyper because I had to just hang in there long enough to get the hyper to uh, spawn. And then it's not exactly a frame one invulnerability either. So you have to anticipate a little bit. But I was able to clutch it out and get the Maniac 1cc. And I remember popping off. Felt pretty good about it because I did want to repeat another run of the game where I die on the final boss. I had two of those in normal mode. I didn't want a third one in Maniac, Maniac mode. And again, thanks to that strategy the guy showed me, that really helped out. Though I wasn't able to take full advantage of it because I got pinned. But yes, so that's my 1cc commentary for the game. I do recommend it. I did have a, I did have a lot of fun playing it. I would say the biggest weaknesses of the game, like I was saying before, is definitely... The fact that the bullet visibility is so poor because the player shot is on the top layer, it should be lower. And also because of the rapid shot and concentrated shot being reversed in priority, those need to be straightened out. Oh, also shout outs to Plasmo. Uh, Plasmo apparently is a tester for this game or was a tester at some point. Shout outs to him. Um, that's really cool for him. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for playing. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please feel free to uh, share with your friends, like, subscribe, spread the word, uh, help grow the channel. I would really appreciate that a lot. And my final concluding remarks on the game is that I do recommend it, especially if you are all about the horizontal shmups on the Switch. I think this is a really great uh, selection for that because the Switch is more prone to horizontal shmups, at least in handheld mode. And I do like the aspect ratio of the game. I didn't comment on that when I was wanting to, but... It's a little bit narrower than 16x9, which I think works better than having a full-on 16x9. I think that can get a little too stretched for my taste. So I do like the aspect ratio. The graphics are fantastic. The music's fantastic. Really, this, the biggest flaw is some of the enemy design is a little, a little bit suspect. You know, I think that could have been fine-tuned a little bit. The bosses could have been beefed up. And as far as overall, like, long-term difficulty... This isn't like a Katsui style game or a Crimson Clover World Ignition where you're going to be playing it for years. But at the same time, not all shmups are like this. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a, maybe like a Blazing Star or something like that. Where, yes, you can dedicate it to scoring and spend a lot of time on the scoring system. And it has a lot to offer you if you do that. But I don't think it's the type of thing you'll be playing constantly, nonstop for decades. But maybe that's just me. And I think... Uh, yeah, definitely worthy of picking up, especially if you are a fan of stuff like Last Resort and Blazing Star. This will be right up your alley. And it's surprisingly more bullet hell than you'd think. So if you're a bullet hell player, I think you'll really like this. And if you're a classic shmup player, you'll also probably enjoy like it. I think it covers a lot of bases, so definitely do recommend it. And again, thanks everyone for tuning in. Adios. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, 72 PCT Water. Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, Ben, Borgi22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Corio, CRC Error, Danielle Savage, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, DJ420, Praise It, Entropy, Eric H, FCK, Frank Carter, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Geriatric Donmaku, Hausu, Ilya, Kiwi, 
JLab, JBRPG, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kiko Man589, Larridge, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Minung, Mechelin, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron Nia Dagger Games, Oklo Googles, Filth Mason, Portal 63, Radocat, Raul, Real Skeen, Self Aware, Shane Shinsensky, Sketchy Raccoon, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight EX, Yishi, Plasmo, and Yuzukaya. Thanks for watching.